Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to install an Android radio in my Jeep Wrangler 2020. Finally, some better audio or some better radio than the stock one, which is this one, which is just horrible. I don't even know how you can sell such a car with that radio. It's so outdated. It's like so outdated. And I want to guide you through what I'm doing, which are my steps. And I also want to show you what this device looks like. So I'm doing a really quick unboxing. I really hope it works. <laughs> we'll figure that together at the end of the video. So let's just dive in. That's the box, that's the brand. Citreal, <laughs> I guess that's what it is. I'll put a link in the description below also, just in case you wanna buy this one. I, I looked through it, I tried to make a good decision. Uh, and I saw some really cheap ones, some one, a couple of really expensive ones. This is a mid-range, so we'll figure out if that was worth it. So let's just open it. Doesn't look too bad. Nine inch Android, so that's the back of it. As always, very important, made in China. It's a unit socket sketch map, which is really good and really important, I would say. I'll try to get a close up of this. It does come with harness and everything else. That's at least what I stated and said it. This is a 4G antenna. I guess this is a Wi Fi or some other antenna factory camera socket the camera interface socket this radio works with the factory camera fingers crossed that it works an additional usb cable we do have some video on oh, no, our input video in video out okay both and then we have the main harness antenna cable canvas connector i guess the main connector we'll just start it somewhere has to be connected this little friend it has a really really good description back here already so for those people who really like to read the user manual that's the one all right guys i just got information from the seller on from amazon and apparently the camera retention adapter we are using to keep the factory rear camera working with this radio very important to wire it so i want to show you how to wire it additionally i will uh, attach a picture show a picture how it should look like you don't need to sort anything but you need to crimp something a little bit so and maybe some electrical tape uh, it's pretty easy and straightforward if you have the right tool for that. I'll link this down in the description as, as well below. Uh, makes things easier so you don't have to cut anything. You just um, uh, take off the insulation a bit from the wire and then you can connect it to it. So we'll get that and then that's will be good to go. You want to connect those B+, ACC and G and D. Those three cables down there. That's I'm gonna connect them to this connector up there. And this connector, as you can see, is from the main power control unit or from power harness, <coughs> which connects right into the car, provides the power in here. And you wanna grab this little connector here, so not at the end. You wanna use the connector in the middle. And then adjust and connect it.
And that's how it could look at the end. It won't win any beauty contests, but it should do the job. Okay, let me say it like that. Because I'm desperate and I would love to have this this uh, this radio working, because it really looked good so far. So <clears throat> what I'm doing right now, let me make it as full as possible. This is the display. It comes with a bezel, with a trim panel, whatever you want to call it. There are five screws. Five screws, one up there, two on the side on this, and two on the other side. I took them off. So you can just remove this trim panel. And that's what it looks like without trim panel. Sleek. And what I'm trying to do, because this fitting, this unit back here is too low. It pushes against the, I guess it's the airflow or something, um, tubes back there. So I wanna try to raise it a little bit, get it higher. I'll give it a try. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, who knows. So yes, yeah, so we can move it higher. I would assume so. But we have to make sure it's not wobbling around, I guess. So. That would be the last setting. I'll give it a try. Perfect, now we have the harness modified a little bit. That's amazing. That means I'll go with you through the wiring again, how that should look like, just to make sure um, everyone is on the same page, because I had to encounter a couple things um, during the installation process. And afterwards we'll install the radio and we'll figure out if it works actually with the rear camera, because that was one big thing which needs to work for me. Um, the entire display was more towards down here uh, mounted, which is definitely not working with my Jeep Wrangler 2020. So I had to take off the bezel first with those five screws. And next was to move the entire unit back here, which is connected to the display, so don't take it off. Just move it up and down, and I moved it up. One thing I want to say though, um, I'm waiting for my Jeep S antenna, which will be mounted here. So I'll keep the red cap on it. Just to protect it. I will, as soon as it arrives, I will open up again and connect the GPS antenna, which will be mounted. I will do a separate video. Unfortunately, this is not included in, in the delivery. Second, um, I will not use the 4G, even though this one, this cable, which is connected here, does come already with a, when you push it to the side, you can open it. Uh, you could plug in a, or pop in a um, SIM card. I do not have one. That's why I will not mount a 4G antenna this time, because I want to lead it through yeah, a little bit outside of the front head unit, just at a connection as best possible. The cable is pretty short, so I also ordered an extension cable for that one, um, also in the description, like the same with the GPS antenna. But the 4G would go in here on this side, so also the red cap, I would remove it and plug it in. I'm not doing it now. But so I'm putting it aside, not installing it today. But we have a Bluetooth and a Wi-Fi antenna. So I want to plug in here, the low one, there's an arrow pointing down. I want to plug in already the Wi-Fi antenna, which 
I put over here. Unfortunately, also, as you can see, <laughs> that's what it looks like currently. There was a plastic piece on it. I lost it, so I also somehow have to replace that unit. Pretty much a bummer that the quality is so cheap on that. So, anyways, I will put it in for now because I want to have it connected to Wi Fi and if possible here at home, I want to have connected to that. Plugged it in, moved a little to the side. This one makes funny sounds. All right, what are we connecting next? Um, let's connect this cable. So we can see that one, which is the mini USB, I would say. And this one goes into, it has four pins, goes in here as well in four pins. They're all, all different. So you can theoretically not mess it up. Don't plug it in where it's six or eight pins. Don't do that. Plug it in where you can see the four pins. And that's what I'm doing now. The nose. So let me see if I can show you. The top part needs to connect on top here and then it should make a sound. There we are. You can see it, that's one thing. <clears throat> Next we'll connect our antenna, which we need, will connect to the unit. This one goes into the antenna. There. It says radio underneath. Plug it in here, push it in all the way. It will connect inside the chip. Then we have next the audio interface or audio connectors with a USB and you have to think about how to connect the USB or if you want to lead it out. There are some USB ports. I have not tested them if they work, but I'm planning to use Bluetooth anyway. But I want to test if this one will work or if the built-in cheap, um, built cheap USB ports will work or if it's just for charging at that point. So I'll use this, what is it? Two, uh, six, eight, ten. Ten pin? Actual ten? Oh, it is ten. Sorry, twenty pin. I'll use that twenty pin and plug it in the biggest port up here. Same, the, the nose here on this side, here on top, has to face up. Do that here. You cannot mess it up, actually. So push it in all the way. Made a little pop sound. Done. Let's see, we also have um, this additional USB port, which I told you I'm using the mini instead of this USB extender. We'll see if that's right. Putting it aside. Now we're getting to the main harness, which is, oh wait, I have to show the main harness with uh, this beautiful big power connector. Um, that goes into the car and the car has the female part. So what happened to this one I showed you already we were connecting we were connecting this camera retention adapter to it. According to the manufacturer or the seller sorry the seller those two cables will not be connected because of the factory camera we have in it. We'll follow that guidance which means we have to go because it was already pre-assembled so this middle piece was already pre-assembled. We have here two connectors. One goes in here. And then we have a, what is it, a 10 pin? This time it is a real 10 pin. Yes. 10 pin, also is a nose. So we'll count here was 10 pin and it looks like it is down here. Oops, wrong side, there we go. You have to plug it in correct. Makes a sound, done. And let's connect this one over here. Black goes in black, white goes in white. Pretty straightforward. If you have an external microphone, you can plug it in here. I do not. We'll see if that's good or not. If I need one or not, I'll go with that how it is right now. Which means we have connected all cables right now. And it also means we go back to the car again. Guys, a long time ago I bought those car pen removal tools as well as this other kit, which is basically the same um, but newer. As well as you will need a screwdriver like this. Those are the tools you will need. Let's start it. All right, guys. Might be a little bright. Oh, and you can see my ear back there in the mirror. But um, behind me, that's where the radio is. That's where we will work. 
and I try to record everything from this angle so you have as much as possible visibility. We'll focus now just on the removal. We'll start with this beauty, climate control as well as the key fob uh, start button. So here's a line where it's just clicked in as well as on the other side. So we'll just remove that part and see how difficult or easy it is. And it feels like not too difficult. Shouldn't be too much force, so be gentle, but do what you need to do. There we are, as always dirty. All right, let's remove this panel. It's a small screw, small Phillips. Keep the screws, you will need them later again. And also, it's clipped in somewhere, the frame at least. I can take that off as well. Don't break it, as always with a little force. That's what it did look like. Now there are more Phillips screws. Uh, just I'll take just off the ones which are connecting to, uh, which are connecting the radio to the car itself. So. They have the same length like the ones down there. So there are two more screws actually. So the first two screws were connected for the frame, for the bezel, to make it look sure nice. Then we have four screws which are on top two. Actually there are five, but I, I think the fifth one is not necessary to take off, which is just holding this board in place. And then there are two on button as well, which are now visible. Able to take the radio out. That's the radio, those are the cables. All right, you can see, I guess, this one is most likely the rear camera. Then we have the main harness here on top. I guess this one will be the antenna, most likely on this side. And then we have another cable here, which I guess must be the USB. We'll figure that out in a sec. Let's see if we can just unplug it. Number one, number two, number three. Oh, you have to push it in and then you can loosen up and get it out. All right. Then we have one important step I didn't mention again. We want to connect those aux in, the red and white one. I want to connect those with the audio interface, which says also aux in right and left. Very important, I guess. There's also another camera in, which is not the right one. And a, what does it say here? It is a back video in. But the main harness, we'll connect that last this time. We do have here the white one with the antenna. We want to connect that one. One. We want to connect the USB, which is this mini USB here. There's no click on anything, so we'll see if that really holds in. Place this time, and then we have, that's what we need now, the existing, the existing camera, which is this red one, and we want to connect it with the re retention unit. Right. Also click in. All right, now we only have the main harness. Connect that one. As already mentioned, make sure you line up those this nose with uh, this part, and it should be lifted. Get in. When you close it, it snaps in place. One thing. What I'm doing now is try to make some space behind here. Try to find the best possible spot where we can store those big and heavy things first before I push everything in. It's in. Don't mess with that. All right, fast forward, we put it back in. I have not started it yet. We'll do that together now. We'll see if it actually works with the rear camera. So what we're going to do, I'm swap over to the driver's seat 
started. Here I am on this side, sorry, pretty bright, but we need a light in here. Let's start it. First try, no success. I think I figured it out finally. So you see, we do have our retention unit here. There are two cables. One is the reverse CVBD, CVBS output. That cable needs to be connected to the camera in. Was that so complicated to mention in the instructions? radio nice well we have an equalizer nice. with Bluetooth obviously so my phone is connected right now uh, radio Bluetooth with navigation which currently uses Wi-Fi here at home really up oh, there it is Los Angeles here we are maybe local storage same with video Oh, testing video, nice. It's fast, it scrolls through nicely, smooth. I think that's good, except the sound I don't like, so I have to figure out how to change that. Other than that, one more thing, the reverse. It works, I think that's important. Okay, we install the radio. It did work now, finally. I hope uh, those instructions will help you and I'll give you a more in-depth review pretty soon as soon as I have my GPS antenna and I put those things in and then I can tell you more. I want to drive around with it, want to see what's the what's good, what's bad about it. So see this just as a part one kind of thing and uh, the installation instructions. Thanks for watching. Tschüss!